Hi, all of you awesome scuba divers out there. Welcome to Scuba Diver Magazine, your favorite place for the latest scuba diving news and gear reviews. Uh, today, we're on Ask Mark, which is our scuba diving Q&A. Uh, I'm Mark, I'm a former scuba diving instructor. Uh, if you do have any questions, by all means, pop them down in the comment section underneath this video. And if you use this Ask Mark hashtag in your comment, it just highlights it behind the scenes and I'll get to an answer. I'll type out an answer as soon as I can. So you, you get an answer as soon as possible. Um, and if you've got a really interesting question, I might turn it into a video just like this one so that everyone can learn because if one person's asking a question chances are nine other people have the same question but they just haven't asked it yet uh, but today i'm answering a question from Heidi morad about panicking underwater So Heidi Murad says, here's one for you. I dive to 55 meters on air uh, on a regular basis. I'm technically trained, good. Um, one time I was diving to said depth and everything was fine until I passed 50 meters. Out of nowhere, I went into full on panic mode for no reason whatsoever. I ascended to 45 meters and I was fine. So I stayed there for a couple of minutes, then tried to go back down to 55, but I panicked again. So so I called the dive, did my deco uh, with 50% and 100 uh, and got out. My buddy at the time told me that I need helium in order uh, for that not to happen again. I honestly don't know what happened or why. So I'd love your input on that. Um, without like knowing all of the other uh, specifics, uh, I can't tell you 100% exactly what it was. Um, if you have a one-off panic attack at deep depths, my first thoughts usually go to narcosis and gas density. At certain depths, all gases will become narcotic due to the pressure. Uh, carbon dioxide is very narcotic. Uh, and the fact that your feeling of panic disappeared as you shallowed kind of leads me to think that it's pressure related and maybe carbon dioxide narcosis. Nitrogen narcosis, uh, is usually the first that most scuba divers experience a narcotic effect of scuba diving. Uh, the exact depth at where people feel it varies. Um, anything from, I think I've heard 12 meters, uh, but most divers tend to feel it at around 18 to 30 meters. But nitrogen narcosis is most often a kind of woozy drunk kind of feeling. Uh, we often call it the martini effect uh, or just being narked, but there's also a dark narc, which most people probably haven't heard of. It's not really taught in most, especially foundational courses, um, where if you're narked, it's kind of like a good trip, but on the flip side of it, you can also get a bad trip with narcosis. Uh, carbon dioxide narcosis um, can cause a dark narc because it can develop an acute anxiety and often a sensation that you're not getting enough to breathe. It's hypercapnia, so you've got too much carbon dioxide in your system because your body can't really get rid of it as much as you're making it. Um, coupled with this, you also have the gas density to contend with. At those depths, the gas that you're breathing is literally thicker and it is just more work for your body to, to move it around through your lungs, out of your respiratory system and just recycle and, and refresh that air, uh, which is probably why your buddy recommended helium because that can lighten the gas mix. Uh, but those are my first thoughts. Um, hypercapnia will give you a... Um, the, the exact symptoms uh, can vary, but can give you that um, kind of, you, you can't get enough to breathe, which might be what caused your panic. Uh, and what that the cause could have been for that is, yeah, because your gas is a little bit thicker, so it's harder for your body to move it around. You might have been uh, working quite hard if there was any current or anything, um, then you're producing more carbon dioxide. So that's telling your brain, hey, I've got a lot of CO2 in my system. You need to breathe more. And that might be what caused the, uh, the panic attack. And yeah, dark narc. Um, it's not a term that you see a lot uh, online. Um, you'll probably find it on some forums, some people having like panic attacks underwater. And um, yeah, yeah, it's it's basically the, the bad trip where no one can really like predict it. Uh, there's no rhyme nor reason. It's just sometimes, yeah, you just get a bad hit and your your brain chemistry just says, 
you know what? Panic. Um, and as, as it went away, as soon as you went back up, then yeah, that usually says that it's pressure related. Um, and the fact that it came back when you increase the ambient pressure around you, yeah, just kind of reaffirms that. Uh, so yeah, I'm thinking gas density, carbon dioxide, uh, those are the things that uh, sort of spring to mind, some kind of narcosis. Um, would uh, would helium help? Probably it will, it will help with the, um, uh, the gas density when you when you, another reason to be dry, uh, diving a helium mix as you go down is yeah the, the 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 air that you're breathing is a lot thicker it's more dense than it is on the surface and our bodies are used to breathing on the surface as you go down deeper 10 20 30 meters your body can kind of manage with that especially with minimal exercise but when you're going through the 40s and the 50s then it does start to get quite thick yeah if you start adding helium into the mix you, you kind of uh, dilute it a bit so it's a bit easier to breathe and there are um, there are dedicated modes in some dive computers nowadays that will work out gas densities based against your current um, gas mix and kind of tell you you know what it would be much easier for you to be breathing this gas. It's, it's much a, a lighter gas to be able to uh, to breathe. So um, I uh, I think it might be that. Uh, it could be something else. But uh, without knowing the the exact um, situation and all of the things and literally sticking a needle and getting like blood samples and stuff, uh, it is really hard to uh, to specifically diagnose it but that's where my mind goes yeah dark knock is um it's luckily it's quite rare um but it's it's one of those things it's it's just really hard to diagnose because yeah as soon as you you start to shallow up it can disappear um but it, it can happen sometimes and it's important to keep a level head um when you, your brain chemistry is literally telling you to panic and do something stupid um you, you really need that like internal monologue to just diagnose everything sort everything out and um just not spit out your regulators or swap to an incorrect gas mix or something uh you, you really have to keep that that level head and rely on your buddy and recognize in your buddy if they're having a, a, a bad um, like narcotic effect and uh, and shadow them up so that they can get their head back on their shoulders um, yeah have a look around um, maybe I'll do a video on it because it's it's not very well um, like mentioned I'll, um, I'll I'll see if I can do a, a video a, um, a video covering like dark knocks and um, yeah just Take it easy. Uh, I mean, to, to get rid of it, the, be the best thing is uh, to yeah, shallow up, but also breathe continually. Uh, try not to skip breathe because then carbon dioxide just builds up. Continual breathe, uh, minimize your dead air space, and um, yeah, just make sure you're getting nice fresh air to get rid of as much of the carbon dioxide as possible. Uh, try not to, uh, to hyperventilate. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a sign or, and a symptom of, um, of hypercapnia. Um, but you want to just clear out as much of that calm dark side as possible by just breathing normally, uh, a good decent lung full, make sure you're clearing out as much of that like dead air space and, uh, and your lungs as well and, uh, and replace it with some fresh air. Um, but yeah, uh, any other questions, uh, by all means, pop them down in the comment section underneath this video. Uh, use this Ask Mark hashtag, uh, get your question featured in the up and coming video. Uh, remember to head over to our website, scubadivemag.com. Check out our social media channels. Uh, like, subscribe, do all that social media stuff here on YouTube. Thank you for watching, everybody. And of course, safe diving.